Welcome, welcome, welcome to PeopleSoft channel. Siva Koya here. Today, in this video, I will show you how to enable and locate trace files to troubleshoot PeopleSoft integration issues. PeopleSoft is capable of generating trace files out of the box when it tries to contact a third party software, either through code or when we try to ping an external URL. In this episode, we will explore what are those trace files, how to locate them in the server, and finally, what can we do in order for people tools to generate that additional trace that would be really helpful when we troubleshoot tricky issues. And most importantly, Oracle support would require these trace files if they have to work on your integration issue. So without further delay, let's get started. I have this YouTube REST API URL which works pretty well in a web browser. This URL will take in such parameters. Imagine that you are searching with a keyword PeopleSoft in YouTube. And if I fire up this URL, YouTube will respond back with the search results in the form of video IDs embedded in JSON format. I have covered how to play YouTube videos with the help of this API in my PeopleSoft REST integration tutorial. Anyways, let's get to the point. When PeopleSoft is trying to talk to this URL, I am receiving an error message. Let's see what that error message is and then we will locate the trace files to figure out the root cause of the issue. Before even we ping that external URL, let's see what kind of integration broker trace settings are enabled in my environment. In order to do that, I will navigate to People Tools, Integration Broker, Configuration, Gateways. I will search for my local gateway. Then I will click on Gateway Setup Properties. Now I will log in with my credentials. These are the same credentials that you created when you installed your PeopleSoft environment. I will click OK. Then I will click on Advanced Properties page. Then I will search for the flag ig.log. As you can see, the current trace level is set to 2. Let's see what does 2 mean. As you can see, 2 means it will log all errors and warnings. In most cases, the default setting works because we are more interested in errors and warnings. We can always update the log level based on our requirement. For example, if you want the system to capture standard gateway exception, you can update it to 1. If you want the system to log important information, we can update it to 3 so that it logs errors, warnings and important information. The maximum trace level you can set is 5 that logs errors, warnings, important and standard information. Next, let's see how to locate our log files. Basically, there are two gateway log files that gets generated. The first log file is errorlog.html. If we scroll a little down, this is where the errorlog.html gets generated. This is the trace file that gets generated by default. This comes with the trace log level setting of 2. And there is one more file that gets generated, messagelog.html, which will be generated at this specific location. In my case, the location is same as errorlog.html. And remember, this file only will get generated when IG log level is set to 3, 4, or 5. Since now you know what kind of trace file gets generated and where to locate the trace file, now let's go ahead and ping our external URL. In order to do that, let me navigate away from this component. I'll click OK, OK. And now I will navigate to People Tools, Integration Broker, Integration Setup, Nodes. And let's create a new external node. I will call it YouTube. I will add and let's give some description. Now let's provide default user ID. Don't worry, this is only to test the connection. Once the connection is successful, we can delete this external node. Now I'll navigate to connectors tab, connector ID, I will select HTTP. 
let me update the HTTP property to get because we are getting information from YouTube. Now I will paste my YouTube API URL. Let me save my node. Now it's time to ping our node. I'll go ahead and ping our external node. This is the error message I'm talking about. Let's understand the root cause of this error message by reviewing the log files. I logged into PeopleSoft server and navigated to the location that we saw before in gateway properties file. Let me go ahead and refresh. As you can see, error log.html was generated. I'll go ahead and open the file. By looking at the error log, we can easily figure out the issue was caused due to a missing digital certificate of the external website. That's why the error says untrusted server certificate chain. If you are interested to know how to install a digital certificate on PeopleSoft web server, I made a separate video for you. For now, let's take a look at other log files that gets generated. PeopleSoft also generates some additional trace files by default at web server level. Let's take a look at them. In order to access those files, we have to navigate to PeopleTools Home, Web Server, PeopleSoft, Servers, PIA, Logs. If I refresh the file location, we can see the log files. These are the three standard trace files that are generated by default. If I open standard output, we can see some warning messages. If we open the contents of PIA standard error file, we can see the root cause of our error message, which is untrusted server certificate chain. Likewise, if we open PIA web logic file, we can see some trace that was logged. By the way, when you create Oracle support case, they will request you to attach all these three files along with error log.html and message log.html. Now let's update the log level to five and see what kind of trace gets generated? Let's go ahead and do that. Now I will update the log level to five. We should see much larger trace files because system logs, errors, warnings, important standard as well as low level information. I will go ahead and save our changes. I will navigate to nodes section. I will open the external node we created before. I will navigate to connectors. I will again ping our node as expected the error was received. If I refresh the log location, now you see message log. If you remember last time message log was not generated because it will not get generated by default log setting. And we have error log. We already saw the contents of error log before. Now let's take a look at other standard log files that get generated. Let me refresh the location. If I open the contents of the file, you will be surprised to notice that not much has been changed as far as logging is concerned. We are expecting a bigger, larger trace file based on our trace setting. Likewise, with PAA standard output, nothing new has been added to the log file. As well as with PAA web logic, the trace is almost the same. You know what? A plenty of trace was generated just that you are not seeing it. In order for you to see that we have to bounce our web server. Let me go ahead and bounce the web server and refresh the file location. You can see the updated trace files. I will shut down my web server. As you can see my domain was stopped. I will bring the server back up. It is starting. As you can see here my domain has started. Now let's go back to our trace location. And if we refresh our trace, you see this size will automatically increase. You can see now the web logic file has a bigger, much bigger file than before. As you can see, it has more detailed trace that was logged. Likewise, we have a larger PAA standard output file. That's it guys. You can have fun by analyzing these trace files or share it with the Oracle support team so that they can assist you. That's pretty much about it for today, guys. If you like the content, don't forget to hit that like button below. And if you want more of these videos, subscribe my channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week. Until then, keep learning.